Ooh. Oh, my time to shine again! Let me in! Ah! No cooldowns. Alright. Oh, hey. Woo! It's dirty. This is going to be your updated guide to playing Lucario in Pokemon Unite. So let's go to the battle prep where I'm just going to put it all out here in the beginning of the video. Extreme speed is the best move on Lucario, hands down. There is no argument for Power Punch. I see people saying, well, Power Punch is better in the 1v1. Well, that's just trolling because the game is about team fights. Team fighting at Dreadnought, team fighting at Rotom, random skirmishes that break out, level 5 ganks or something, and then Zapdos. Zapdos is the game. Until that changes, like maybe if backdooring or getting 1v1 picks gets a bit more priority, there is a slight argument for power punch but until then extreme speed is just the best mostly because like we'll talk about extreme speed but the reason why i wanted to bring this up during the battle item selection is because of full heal people say well when you get power punch upgraded you're unstoppable and that that's what makes it better no nah, you just pop full heal and then you go in with a million dashes and since you have a million dashes eject fun doesn't really matter because if you're playing the extreme speed properly you're getting so much mobility yeah eject fun doesn't really matter um other arguments like X attack, since you are going to be like a physical Pokemon, you're going to be one to like dash around, do tons of damage. But the thing is, you're not using auto attacks. And X attack works better with auto attacks because you have like 50% attack scaling on your extreme speed. So you're not really getting too much crazy damage. Um, X speed doesn't matter, slow smoke doesn't matter. Really, just like full heal is like the 100% or like 95% pick on Lucario. Some people, they're just really married to their eject button but overall like you pop full heal you run through all of their crowd control because that's another interesting thing about full heal is that when you time it right not only are you not getting like cc'd and then blown up which eject button doesn't even save you from in this game most of the time because there's so much crowd control there's so much mobility that even if you flash away from them or you blink away from them they still catch you and they still crowd control you and you still die anyways but full heal you get to dictate the fight so you blow their cooldowns now they don't have anything to use against you while you still have a little bit of extra unstoppability for like other people in the team and then you just pop off with a couple of extreme speeds right there start getting the resets start getting KOs, start snowballing ridiculously full heal is the way to go and also here's another big thing about the updated moveset guide so there's gonna be some stuff uh, later on when we're in the practice tool showcasing like how Lucario works but also this is like the moveset right now mostly because since making the Lucario video, Focus Band Buddy Bearer has somehow even gotten more important. It's one of those things where it's like somehow Dreadnought and Zapdos have even gotten more important. Like, I can't overstate the value of Dreadnought, but two days from now, it's going to be overstated, the overstating, overstate, overstate. So, like, that's another thing. It's like Buddy Barrier. Even if you think that Aura Sphere isn't that great of a move, but also as people have played Lucario more, it's actually a pretty strong Unite move. So, like, Buddy Barrier with Aura Sphere, really good. Focus Band, that's like, these two are almost 100% picks on pretty much every Pokemon. So, it really just leaves you with a third item. And Attack Weight, it just gives you the highest flat attack. So use it. Also, if you end up with like a weird gank or a weird scoring opportunity, then you're just going to be snowballing your attack and getting even stronger. So really, there isn't too much better of a move to put here. Um, in the first guide, I was talking about Floatstone. Floatstone just turned out to be not that great of an item and not really work out too much because the very small amount of attack you get on Floatstone is just offset by an opponent with Focus Band or Buddy Barrier or really any other item. So even just like trying to snowball into pure damage, that's not optimal in this game. So just kind of like teching in a little bit of damage on the attack weight that's going to kind of clean up your combo and then hopefully really just like add up throughout a team fight or add up in the early game where it has a bit more impact and then just drops off from there a big thing scoring doesn't matter in this game early on again it's dreading on zapdos that is the game so don't be like oh i have attack weight so i have to score when two of them are here and i haven't seen their jungle at like level four or something no make sure you're only scoring in like 100 percent guaranteed score situations if not just fall behind get experience get to that level five power spike and then you're gonna be good to go Okay, so I know there's a lot of scuffed updates randomly being thrown into this guide, but we just had the mobile update for Pokemon Unite, and it introduced new items, and Razor Claw is absolutely broken on Lucario and any Pokemon that is a melee attacker. 
So pretty much all the melees, like, you just do so much with this. You get bonus damage on your attack after ability usage, which is insane with the extreme speed auto attack spin around at the end. Also, basic attack decreases movement speed, so you lock them in, you punch them more, then you get your knockup, and then things are insane. And because of that, it means scope lens is also an option. So this is a 100% pick. You go Buddy Barrier, Focus Band, and then Razor Claw, depending on what you have upgraded, depending on what you're using your, like, level 30 super token on or something. But Scope Lens is viable, and it opens up a new playstyle and also a lot of counterplay. Uh, check out my other guides. I'm going to be doing, like, a new updated item tier list, item guide, breaking down all the new items as well. So, like, comment, subscribe, notifications. I'll probably say, like, five times in these scuff updates. But... It creates a lot of weird item theory because scope lens makes you very vulnerable. Lucario with focus band is absurd. Like focus band scope lens, it becomes it comes down to personal preference, but like stacking crit also gets really insane. But it's also RNG based. You're only ending up at 8% if you get all of these maxed. If if you only have like scope lens and a razor claw at level 20, then I say do um buddy or not buddy bear a focus band but if you can get these level 30 because you play absol talon flame cinderace or something then you can run this but the problem is focus band lets you win that early skirmish so what you need to do is you need to proc the opponent's focus band leave the fight hopefully if you can successfully and then on that second encounter you have that 90 second window to fight them one or twice and then you have the advantage so if you don't get the advantage by burning their focus band then you could actually be at a severe disadvantage in certain skirmishes but if you play around that then you're good to go or you could just be the all-in aggro unga bunga lucario i don't care about the six percent rng that i get you know an extra 400 damage on an auto attack or an extreme speed which in the grand scheme of things actually isn't a lot and then the focus band just gives you more health value, more durability value, synergizes a lot better. Uh, just some some kind of update. So same thing still apply for the video, except now Razor Claw is busted, and it at least it settles the debate. You don't have to worry about attack weight. You don't have to worry about muscle band. Razor Claw done. A lot of weird stuff going on, but let's talk about the move set. We're now we get into the extreme speed and the power punch. So yeah, it's like power punch level 11 becomes immune to hindrances while charging. You have to wait until level 11 for it to still be worse than the extreme speed. Uh, playing around the extreme speed though, is like when you hit level five in lane, you are much stronger. The thing about extreme speed's power is that you win 2v3s at level five. If you're getting ganked and they like walk into Vespaquin or if they're like lined up perfectly with an Apom or an Audino or something, you just get resets galore and because you're healing off of extreme speed, which is another incredible thing about it. Like if you're using Buddy Barrier because you have your night move going off and then you heal up while the Buddy Bear is proccing, why well, are you just coming back in with a crazy amount of flat health? Same thing as it's working into your steadfast ability. Steadfast is what breaks Lucario. So if you're just kind of doing all those things, now you're, you have to kill Lucario like twice while it's doing all this crazy damage, all these crazy resets, and you're, you're also having to hit it in this game that has, like, I wouldn't say the controls are clunky, but if someone's like hyper dashing around you, it's a lot harder to hit them with skill shots than other MOBAs. So you could also just like have effective DP or like effective durability in them just missing shots because you're dashing around too much to even be able to hit. So that unpredictability also makes it very difficult to catch on the Lucario. And again, like, yeah, you just, you just need to be focusing on the resets and you're going to be stronger at level five and even level seven because people are like, well, power punch, you get the multi hits, you can get the reset. Well, Power Punch is weaker if you just insta-throw it, so you have to charge it to get that, to then auto-attack. Like, it's it's really clunky. Power Punch is super clunky, whereas Extreme Speed is more damage, it's cleaner, it's faster, it's more mobility, it's just insane. And then that brings us to the Bone Rush. So the thing about Bone Rush, it resets the blue circle on Extreme Speed targets. So that's, like, where the reset comes into play. It's also where the language gets kind of weird on Extreme Speed. It says that... If the move hits an opposing Pokemon from point-blank range, its cooldown is reset. What that means is that if Extreme Speed hits them and does damage, not if, like, Extreme Speed is used on you from melee range or anything. I see a lot of people when I'm doing Lucario gameplay saying, like, oh, what's that blue circle? That just means if you hit them, you're going to reset Extreme Speed and it's going to consume that circle. Well, if you use Bone Rush, it puts the circle back on them. So that's where the combo that we're going to talk about in the practice tool comes into play. Uh, close Combat doesn't do that. You're also standing in position it's just not as good like it's really about the bone rush and then your level 13 power spike like you need to make sure you're a level 13 for that zapdos fight it doesn't happen every time 
But if like that is your main priority, then you're going to be in a good position because Bone Rush Reset is effectively a get out of jail free card. Because like if you miss an extreme speed, yeah, you drop a lot of damage, you drop a lot of combo, but that doesn't make Power Punch better because you can still whiff Power Punch and still not be super effective or anything like that. So it's like if you miss that, then that's when you need to really play around the Bone Rush. Uh, the more time you put into Lucario and the more you just focus on creatively and like expressing a skill cap of resetting as many extreme speeds as possible you just keep focusing on that you just keep developing it this guide can't teach you all the shenanigans that go into lucario because there is a lot of skill cap there but when you find like as you just play it more you like you start seeing more opportunities then those opportunities just become second hand and then you're just doing them automatically and that's where it starts getting really crazy and that ties into level 7 bone rush and level 13 upgraded bone rush and then we get into aura cannon so aura cannon again we're going to talk about in the practice tool it's not really that great. Like, if you just try to throw an Aura Cannon from far away, it does pretty much no damage. But the secret to Aura Cannon is using it point blank. And you can use it point blank on objectives like Dreadnought and Zapdos. Or, if you're, like, extreme speeding and dashing around and, like, like you're just popping off in a fight, just set off the Aura Cannon inside of it. Especially if you've taken a little bit of damage. That way you get Buddy Barrier. That way you just kind of, like, get inside that snowballing. You also get the upgraded power from just using a Unite move. And that's where things get pretty crazy. But the secret to Aura Cannon that also just completely breaks Lucario, is that much like Bone Rush, it resets extreme speed. So now you're looking to extreme speed as much as possible, not put it on cooldown, because again, that's an accident. Like, you need to make sure you're always hitting blue target, and don't greed. You might always, you might try to greed, like, oh, if I get that extra extreme speed in here. No, no, no. You want to just use a couple, maybe not even hit them all. Like, it may, there might be two people on the outskirts of the fight that are hard to hit, that still have a potential reset. Don't worry about them. Bone Rush the people that are close, Extreme Speed some more, then you use Aura Cannon, and then that's going to reset even more people on targets you hit. If you use it point blank because you Extreme Speed on top of someone set up an Aura Cannon, that's a lot of damage, that's even more resets, and then just keeps on going from there, Buddy Barrier's broken. So again, it's like just understanding that Lucario has a ridiculous amount of moving parts, and if you flub it, well then you're just useless for like 9 seconds as you're waiting for your Extreme Speed cooldown, but if you do it perfectly, there's really nothing Lucario can't do, and that's why, like, Power Punch is so much better. Ba Power Punch is the lower skill cap player. That if you can't master extreme speed, you probably shouldn't be playing Lucario, but if you really want to play Lucario, that I guess you can be somewhat effective on the Power Punch. That's another thing that people are like, oh, but Power Punch is so good for securing objectives, and it has that extra benefit with the Aura Cannon. Well, Aura Cannon actually benefits extreme speed, so that kind of cancels out. And... In a proper game state, you shouldn't be in, like, the desperate situation to be trying to, like, power a punch, secure a kill, or power a punch, try to steal Zapdos or something. Especially, like, it's better to extreme speed through everyone, like, pop full heal, extreme speed through the team to Zapdos, and then point blank aura cannon on the Zapdos for the steal. That's actually going to work better, and if you actually hit one of them, then that means you can keep coming out of the extreme speeds and more resets, and yeah, like, there's just really no case for the power punch, even when looking at... Um, bone Rush and the combo hit resetting Power Punch cooldown or the Aura Can in general. Nah, just always focus on extreme speed and then you're just going to get better. And that also, if you just like, play, like Power Punch is also, I think, a handicap in the way that if you play extreme speed from the beginning, you're just going to get better at Pokemon Unite. You're going to get better at Game Sense, you're going to get better at landing abilities, you're going to get better, better at managing cooldowns. It makes you a better Lucario and it also makes you a better player and then you can pick up other Pokemon and then you're just going to be stronger overall. Steadfast, like I said, this is what breaks Lucario, especially in the early game. That Steadfast Shield is ridiculous, especially when Pokemon don't want to have crazy amounts of damage, and it's all gated around their cooldowns on their abilities. So it's like you just eat all their abilities, and then you're free to do whatever you want for them, or whatever you want to them for a while. And yeah, just like understand when you have the Steadfast, when you have the Focus Band, and just commit to a fight, stay in there, and you're going to win those early skirmishes pretty easily. That's also what combos into your Meteor Mash and your Quick Attack. You quick attack through someone and then you meteor mash them into your team or you meteor mash them away from the goal. That's going to be bread and butter right there. Same thing for like follow ups on wild Pokemon. Quick attack, meteor mash combo, easy secures, and also just like really good ways of getting resets and all those other things inside of fights. Like if you have steadfast plus your focus band and you're in the fight, you're getting a second quick attack. You're getting a second meteor mash and then they die. And then you hit level five and then you're getting like a million extreme speeds and then you're just winning everything. Bas basic attack. You get the knockup. Lucario isn't a basic attacker. Even as like a melee all-rounder Pokemon. Nah, you're just you're gonna be like hyper mobility on the ability uses, even with like power punch and uh, extreme speed. But it's like you just wanna be crazy ability based and then 
yeah, you're just gonna be really strong, which is why I say attack weight over the muscle band. So now we're going to get into the practice tool. I'm going to show some gameplay. Also, I have tons of Lucario games, so check out the description or maybe the pinned comment or my playlist or something if you want to see even more Lucario gameplay to get a baseline of where to begin and to start like understanding what Lucario's goals are in fights. And then you can just kind of develop your skill from there. So yeah, now we're just going to talk about like laning and stuff. So let's go into a practice game where we can start talking about the Lucario combos. And this is the most important thing about Lucario. If you're wondering why opponents Lucarios are always better than yours, it's because they've mastered the ability usage. So let's go into practice options. Let's go and just like turn off the opposing Pokemon. Now the first thing you want to do is start quick attack. Quick attack is going to be good for the lane setup. So I'm going to show this a little bit. Then the big thing is here is like, ooh, use quick attack. So you hit these two guys and then that does a lot of damage and sets up for an easier clear. Now if you're going for jungle, starting off with quick attack is what you want to do dash over the wall, hit Lillipop, and then that's going to help out with your clear. So we got that, but now we can level up and talk about the insanity that is Lucario. So let's go to level five, that way we can get our, into our first level ups, and then we have extreme speed. So extreme speed, it's a dash, and then you get the reset if the opponent gets hit by it and hasn't been hit by it for a short time. Now you might notice a blue aura around the target and it looks weird. It's like, hey, this doesn't happen in my normal Pokemon games. This is something for Lucario with the extreme speed. And it means that if you hit this target with extreme speed, it goes on cooldown. And this isn't just going to be for like enemy Pokemon or something like that. All Pokemon in the game are affected by this. So you can actually get two dashes on one target like that. Now you can use this to kind of set up some combos. You know, you go extreme speed onto them, use Meteor Mash, that's going to be CC, knocks them back, and then you dash onto them. And that just kind of opens up a little bit of the potential for Lucario. So I'm going to go and push this back, and I'm going to get, give ourselves some levels. So level seven is where things get insane. Here is where people saying that Power Punch is better don't understand how extreme speed works. So this is going to be your bread and butter level seven through 12 Lucario combo. You want to extreme speed a target, reset with bone rush, extreme speed, extreme speed, potential bone rush back. It's crazy. It's insane. The amount of mobility, the amount of d damage, the amount of dashes, it makes it really hard to hit Lucario because like the opponent's trying to land like crowd control or abilities on you and you're just dashing around them. Like that's another thing you want to do as Lucario. You want to time the opponent's cooldowns really well. You want to use that full heal at the right time to either cleanse CC or become immune to it as you're going in, as you're taking that fight. Then you just also want to dodge abilities and become pretty much unstoppable. So let's do it again and let's try to do it as fast as possible. So you go extreme speed, bone rush, extreme speed and then also maybe cut around extreme speed again bone rush again attack and that's that's insane that's that's like you get all of these extreme speed resets on one character because bone rush cleanses it now it gets even crazier than that if there's more than one enemy because you can just keep going for reset so we go reset reset bone rush reset reset bounce and that's also where Lucario gets very dangerous. Like, And this is also why Power Punch isn't as good on Lucario, because you're not as strong in all stages of the game. Yeah, like a charged up Power Punch after an Aura Sphere into the team fight at Zapdos can do some insane things. It's not even like a guarantee you're going to have that level 13 for the crucial fight right before Zapdos or something like that. Whereas you can use the Pokemon in lane to reset. Like, let's say there's an enemy po- Actually, we can go over to the substitute doll over here. Let's just say there is an enemy Pokemon kind of lined up. Well, you can use the uh, Apom to then dash to them and then get more dash resets. So now we're just capitalizing on more damage and then we're able to hit them for four dashes in a lane. So let's say you're level five fighting over the Vespaquin. Most likely it's going to be the second Vespaquin spawn. Well, you can either just take Vespaquin super fast by doing all of this, resetting and then dashing and then doing crazy stuff like that. So it becomes really easy to get Combi. It becomes really easy to get Vespaquin. Also becomes really hard to fight and contest because you can just run around and dash any kind of ways and in any kind of directions and just be crazy. So that's going to be the biggest thing to learn about Lucario. And even though like your melee, it doesn't mean you just have to like sit on someone and mindlessly attack them. There is going to be like micro kiting inside this where you do want to move around. You do want to position. The opponents are going to move. So it's not just like, oh yeah, we have a substitute doll and standing Pokemon here. Now they're going to be moving around. So you really need to make sure that you're landing all of your dashes in fights. If you miss a dash and you don't get that reset, well now you're in trouble and even if you land the bone rush well there's nothing to dash to even though you are able to dash them so extreme speed is on cooldown the dash icon is up and then you're just kind of useless 
so that's where the fights get a little tricky uh, if that happens that's when you want to use your aura sphere you can get that speed to like run away get ready to re-engage just buy yourself a little bit of time for the cooldowns but lucario hasn't even gotten insane yet so then we want to get to level 13 so extreme speed and bone rush and this is where after using bone rush if you press it again it resets extreme speed no matter what now it doesn't reset extreme speed if someone is already on cooldown for it so let's hit rotom with this let's miss the bone rush on them and i think we even though we we're like still waiting on cooldowns see they don't get it back so if i use extreme speed it still goes on cooldown so you still have to land the bone rush on the opponents but now it just gives you either an extra reset to get in harder finish off an opponent or get out if you are going to be missing those cooldowns and everything's going wrong so now it goes extreme speed do all the crazy things get your reset extreme speed again extreme speed again bone rush extreme speed extreme speed anyone that thinks that power punch is better after seeing that display i i don't know what to say about you or for you in that case because like that in a fight is why lucario is absolutely destroying people so now we're going to show it on the substitute doll it's effectively the same thing except with an extra extreme speed at the end so one two three four five six yikes and then if there's more targets you just get more and more extreme speeds on top of it that's what you need to do that's what you need to practice go into the practice tool make sure that becomes a second nature as breathing so you can always take the opportunity when you see it and then you don't have to like think about it too much like you need to be able to react fast you need to be able to make it happen instantly inside team fights while there's mo multiple pokemon around so let's go into a game and let's show off what i'm talking about because the laning pre-7 also has a little bit of tech inside of it and then you do need to find your way from level 7 to 13 but you're still insane at level 7 just doing all the crazy stuff for lucario okay so i have more final thoughts and advice before we get into the gameplay and that's also why this video is going to be a re-upload because there's some very important information that didn't make it into the first take of this video so i didn't talk about how at the end of extreme speed you can auto attack to do a little spin at the end and that's just a dps increase so you should be doing it as much as possible but not every single time because it is an animation so you do have to like wait for the attack animation as it's going off and if you're also going to dash past someone then they're not inside of it, so I could put your auto attack on cooldown and create a lot of weird things. It's also worth noting that this is based on your auto attack cooldown, so if you auto attack then immediately extreme speed, you're not going to be able to do the circle kick around it. Um, sometimes it matters, sometimes it doesn't. It's kind of like Zero Aura Spark interaction, that like the auto attack boosted spark doesn't work if your auto attack is on cooldown. But maybe the biggest revelation that didn't make it into the guide is that your Unite move resets your extreme speed on opponents. So we go extreme speed, bone rush, extreme speed, and then Unite move, and look at that, they got the blue little thing on them, so then you can go and use it again. This is, like, the skill cap on Lucario is already insane, which is why I have to re-upload this video, because there's a lot of little things to talk about. Also, I have more gameplay I added on the end, because I've been playing a lot of Lucario. I consider it my secondary main. So yeah, now you have to, like, 200 IQ big brain hitting everyone on the team, trying to get as many bone rush resets as possible, doing that, and then throwing out the aura sphere to get even more resets, and then do, like, all kinds of crazy wackiness with your extreme speed. Also, the Aura Sphere is going to give you the Buddy Barrier Boost, the Movement Speed, all kinds of extra benefits, and it is one of those things because people are like, oh, well, your Power Punch gets empowered after using the Unite move. Well, with the realization that it also resets Extreme Speed, now Power Punch doesn't even have that advantage or, like, tied into your Unite move because... That could be as big, if not bigger, than the empowered power of punch. And then the last thing I want to talk about is optimizing your Unite move. Because the reason why it feels so weak is because at range you only get one to two ticks of damage. So let's hit this core fish and see how much damage it does. Like I said, sometimes it hit, hits once, sometimes it hits twice. It also like depends on the hitbox of the Pokemon. So yeah, that got two on the uh, Lillipop. If we go and try to do a closer hit onto the Ludicolo, we can see a couple of hits right there. However, if you point blank it, you get more instances of damage because as you're releasing it, it's actually going to count for a couple of hits. And you can even hit people that are slightly behind you and still going to do like the most damage possible with the Unite move. If you're just kind of like throwing it at range. It can get kind of weird and inconsistent. Sometimes semi-close, it'll hit like three times. 
Most of the time it hits two on substitute doll, but the thing taken into consideration is that the substitute hitbox is really big, so it's also like not super accurate for certain moves. So where it shows like two or three hits on the Unite move, it might actually be one or two in actual game. And sometimes it's actually only been able to hit the substitute doll with one instance of damage. That also could be why it shows that like the Unite move feels really weak. But now let's think about this when it comes to Zapdos, because using Aura Cannon point blank is going to be way better for stealing or securing Zapdos. That's when you use your extreme speed. You know, you get in there, you do your thing, you get your resets, you pop that, pop that, and then you want to be like pretty much inside of Zapdos, just really throwing it. And that's going to be some pretty decent execution damage. And kind of gets the point, like, depending on where you are with the Zapdos in the pit and where the enemies are, you know, your extreme speed up to Zapdos, like using the enemy team to like get in there, and then that's when you throw your Aura Cannon directly on Zapdos, and that could be a much better steal potential right there. And if you're in like a really panic situation, don't even worry about hitting the enemies with the Unite move, just make sure you are point blanking Zapdos, and it's really just like those weird optimizations that push Lucario even higher, and I think those are definitely needed for this to be the best Lucario guide. Enjoy the gameplay. Also, it's just hard to lane with Curlia. Wow. Ah, uh, I should have punched him in the wall for the stun. Oh, this is free. Oh, never mind. He had that TP. Rabu getting the counter counter jungle. Yeah, and then we oh. That's how you do it. Push them away. Secure the Vespaquin. Extreme speed's on cooldown. Oh, there's their nine tails. Ooh, see, now we do things like that. Because again, he, he went into the uh, the creep. Where is he going? He was trying to go for a Zidge Bear that just did not exist. So that's how Lucario does it to me. Like, that's how, oh, that's how Lucario just do it. Um, hit, hit. See, like, yeah, imagine if this wasn't 1v2. Oh. Oh, that should have KO'd. Makes sense. So you kind of have to be patient. Like, I want to mash and I want to make all this stuff happen as fast as possible. Also, I shouldn't lead with the Bone Rush. Ooh. Oh, they just let me reset forever now. I thought I was gonna try to leave. Like, I used the bone to get myself space so I could get into everything. I use the Bone Rush too early though, like extreme speed, extreme speed, Bone Rush, extreme speed, extreme speed, extreme speed, extreme speed, extreme, extreme speed. Like it does, it do that, like I could do that, it's crazy. See, if you just only focus on learning this. Oh dang, I dashed into the wall. Oh wait, I'm level 13 so I get all the resets. Oh. Like, this doesn't just solo Zapdos, but dang, like... Like, you do that when Zapdos is kind of low health, and then you're just stacked. Also, like, use your Night Move, and then that's when you set up the Execute. Actually, you want to go... 
I think you can get away with it. No cooldowns. Alright. Oh, I was about to say, let me get this. Yeah. 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 Alright. Ooh. Oh no, it's 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 it's, it's disgusting. Alright. Ooh, he has no cooldowns. Yes! Oh my god, let's get it. You're bad. Get out of here. Oh my. Dude, I am 1v2ing this lane. One. Ha! Ha! Huge. Like this. Like, what can they do? I still got resets, my dude. Oh. Alright. Oh, nice. Uh, who died? Cinderace died, because like I said, there was no reason to be up there. Ooh. Still got resets, my dudes. Oh, nice. They just... Wow. Okay. 